Hi, I'm Lloyd Swain with Charter Channel 3. Welcome to our Charter Talk special report today. We're very fortunate to have Congressman Doc Hastings with us. And Doc, it's good to see you in town and uh, visiting with us today. Um, nice to be here, Lloyd. That, 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 that's great. Um, talk to us about what's going on in Washington, D.C. And I, as a, a voting member of the public, I'm a little bit worried about how much money appears to be spent. Well, a, a couple of things, and let me let me focus on the money part first, and then I'll talk about the issue, mainly mm -hmm. health care is what's uh, gathering all of that debate and all yes. the attention right now. But th the president submitted his budget this year, uh, as he every president is supposed to at the beginning of a, of a fiscal year. Uh, and uh, certainly every president presents a budget, and then the Congress will decide right. the, the priorities. But the fact that uh, this president and the Congress is controlled by the Democrat Party, I think these numbers will probably be pretty pretty accurate. Uh, and then the priorities within under those numbers is, is where the debate's going to be. Sure. But the president submitted a budget of roughly $3.6 trillion for next year. Now that's what we call the unified budget, everything the federal government spends, from Social Security to student loans to uh, military, mm -hmm. ag, I mean, it's all mm -hmm. put in one budget. Uh, so that, you know, that's a big, big number, obviously, 3.6 trillion. But the disturbing part is this. The anticipated revenues for next year is 2.2 trillion, meaning that the federal government, by this proposal, is going to borrow 1.4 trillion dollars to fund government. Or put another way, that is a projected deficit next year of 1.4 trillion dollars. Now, these numbers are unprecedented. And, and I say that because the last fiscal year, the federal deficit was in the excess of a trillion dollars also. So we're going to have two years of spending money wow. we don't have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say unprecedented because those figures are roughly three to three and a half times larger than the previous highest deficit. In other words, the previous, previous highest deficit that our country had ever run uh, was at the height of the Iraq War. And it was slightly over $400 billion, which is a lot of money. Don't, I'm not won't question that. That's right. But for goodness sakes, to, uh, but we were in a war. I mean, we were engaging on two fronts in Afghanistan. We were engaging in Iraq. We were building up our homeland security. I mean, all of those expenditures, mm -hmm. I think, were necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we are now with the war in Iraq winding down. Uh, we're still engaged in a war in Afghanistan, but homeland security now is pretty stable. And yet here we are spending three times that amount from a deficit standpoint than we did at a time you know, where it was very difficult. So that disturbs me. And, it and, I, and frankly, we have heard a great deal from people exactly on this. So it's on top of all of this that this debate of health care comes in because the projected cost of the health care proposals, and keep in mind, there's two proposals that have passed uh, at least each respective house, yes. the one in the House and the one in the Senate. In both cases, in both cases, the projected expenditures of this health care reform uh, is over a trillion dollars. So that's on top of what we are talking about with this proposed budget for the next year. Now, the trillion dollar expenditure is over a period of time, but nevertheless, the idea is more and more spending. So, you know, th this really concerns me and it concerns uh, a, a lot of people. Mm. Uh, I mean, people talk about a trillion dollars and it's kind of hard to fathom, but to put things into perspective, if you had a trillion dollar uh, uh, debt and you wanted to pay it off, and you wanted to pay it off at a million dollars a day, it would take over 3,000 years to pay it off. That's the scope of what we're talking about here. So uh, uh, this debate then of, of all of this spending plus trying to take over our health care system in our country uh, with a government-run system because both the House and the Senate approach uh, lead ultimately, in my view, uh, to that end result. And so uh, I just think it's very, very bad policy. We're at a critical time right now as we uh, go into uh, into March uh, on, on this whole debate. So we'll we'll have to see what happens. Is this a basic philosophical difference between Republicans and Democrats? This amount of government 
spending and then control, uh, particularly with health care? Oh, I, I don't think there's any question about that. Sure. There, there is a difference between the two parties. And let me just go back uh, last year, a little over a year ago, when our economy was really uh, struggling, mm -hmm. still struggling now, but when it was struggling then, uh, the solution of the Democrats was a, was a government intervention of a stimulus bill which spent uh, about four-fifths of a trillion dollars mm -hmm. to stimulate the economy. When that bill was passed, the unemployment rate was in the area of 7% nationwide. Uh, and the promise was if we pass the stimulus, this massive amount of government spending, the unemployment rate would not go above 8%. In fact, it's gone up to 10%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the end result is, is our economy is, is still struggling, but we have added to the debt. Now, that's just a philosophical difference. I believe the best way to uh, get out of a, uh, out of a, a recession uh, is to somehow empower the private sector to make the investments, to take the risk, to produce services and products that the American people will buy, not a big government intervention uh, of dollars, public dollars, uh, into the marketplace. And now we're seeing after a year that uh, it frankly hasn't happened because the basic question is where are the jobs? And again, I'm talking nationwide, but we are certainly seeing it here within central Washington. So, uh, uh, but that is a philosophical difference. There's no question about that. And even when you look at health care reform, uh, I had mentioned in my view that the two plans that pass the House and the Senate lead to a government run system. I don't think anybody will argue uh, that we need to have some reforms to health care. But to me, it's a, it's a fundamental issue. If the issue is that people do not have uh, access to insurance, then it seems to me the proper way to, to address that issue is to open more access, more options for health insurance, rather than restrict it. And the way they're going, uh, the Democrats are going, is to restrict that options. Now, what do I mean by that? There is not tax parity, for example, if a business apply, uh, gets uh, health insurance mm -hmm. for their mm -hmm. employees. They get to deduct that from their income tax. But an individual buying health insurance does not get to deduct that from his or her income tax. So there should be tax parity. That would be one way uh, to do it. Just allow the marketplace to take care of it. Expand the choices. Uh, another way would be uh, on a portability issue. People work for a company. You know, you can't take that insurance policy with you if you were to leave that employee. Uh, I think there ought to be a provision for that to happen. Now, there may be an increased cost uh, of that, but the portability issue, I think, is a very significant one. So once again, you're expanding more choices rather than eliminating. Another one of the mm -hmm. small businesses that band together to buy insurance. Maybe like businesses could band together and buy a group policy. Again, more choices in order to get uh, a, a, a better policy. But the, the, the approach that they are taking uh, is, to, uh, is to restrict those policies and eventually get to a government system. I think it's the wrong way to go. Have they left the Republican Party out of this entire yeah. message and debate? And yeah, there's no, no question. I mean, as, as long ago as last May, I know the leadership in the House sent a letter to President Obama saying, mm -hmm. Uh, we are willing to sit down and talk, and he has said a number of times, li willing to have your ideas, but the first time that he listened to our ideas w was at that health care summit. And uh, those that watched it, or at least parts of it, saw that there was a dramatic difference in approach, like what I just explained. And so, as long as they are moving in a direction of having a government-run system, Republicans simply aren't going to go along, because that is contrary to what we believe the best way to deliver health care is. So, uh, but we have not been part of the system, and we were there that day. Uh, we offered a number of, uh, of positions, both members of the House and members of the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, to my knowledge, uh, very few, if any, of those ideas are even incorporated in this larger idea. But I might add, too, we still haven't seen the President's bill. I mean, we have, we have the House bill, which is roughly 2,000 pages. We have the Senate bill, which is roughly 2,000 pages. The president's attempt, at least at the health care summit, from my understanding, was try to merge, the, you know, bridge those two gaps. But he's never put that bill in 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 bill form, so you can look at see what it, what he's doing. He's still talking concept. 